Hello, my name is Wade Nomura and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. One of the uh, interesting trips that I've recently made to Rotary Headquarters was uh, that with the Pets Alliance, uh, where we take a look at training presidents. And on this trip specific, I was able to catch up to John Huco, who is the uh, General Secretary of Rotary International and has recently been also designated as the CEO or Chief Operating Officer. His role, his responsibility, believe it or not, is to oversee all operations of, of Rotary. And uh, it's quite huge. It's a large commitment for him and his time. He has a avid or strong background in business. So he came from the business sector and actually walked away from a very lucrative position of you know, what he was doing before to take over and work with Rotary and Rotary Foundation. He oversees both of those and, uh, along with the operations at Evanston itself. So his day-to-day -day work is, I couldn't imagine, it's got to be tremendous, it's huge. And what he sees, he oversees, the changes he has made is uh, only because he's a very inspirational person, a man that works hard, he is innovative, has a lot of things, and you will find also that he is an avid bicycle rider. So because of that, his time commitment, what he does, um, I would imagine he's probably only sleeping about two to three hours a day. He's a Rotarian, and this video will actually talk to a lot about what he does and what he's done. And with that, let's go ahead and cut into the video, um, this interview with John Yuko, where I met with him in his office. Okay, John, uh, thank you very much for uh, offering to do this part of the interview with me. Yeah. Um, we're here to get to know you, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, you know, I'm the, the General Secretary and CEO of Rotary International and the Rotary Foundation. I've been in this uh, uh, job for eight years. I'm starting my, my ninth year. It's been an absolutely extraordinary uh, experience. Um, prior to that, I had a fairly uh, a varied and diverse career. I was a, a lawyer by training and I was a partner in a major international law firm for many years. Mm -hmm. I practiced mostly in, uh, in Eastern Europe, in Moscow, uh, in Ukraine, and then the Czech Republic. Uh, and after that, I went into the Bush administration. I had a senior political position wow. at a at a new foreign assistance agency that President Bush W. Uh, had created called the Millennium Challenge Corporation. It was a government agency designed to deliver U.S. foreign assistance in a new and, and interesting way. Uh, and of course, when o President Obama won the election in 2008, I was a political appointee, so I was, uh, you know, changing the guard mm -hmm. at the agency. Uh, and then I went and spent some time at a, at a think tank uh, in Washington. I also taught at the, also taught at Georgetown Law School. Mm -hmm. And then this uh, Rotary opportunity came along in, in 2011. Very fortunate to, uh, to be here. Great. So um, what made you decide on it? Was it the offer? Or was it something you felt you could do for the organization? Well, it was an interesting story because I had I'd come out of the government and I was sort of uh, took a few years. Again, was, was it the Carnegie Endowment trying to figure out what, what to do next? And my, and my father is a very, um, very avid reader of the, of the Rotarian magazine. Mm -hmm. and, and he was reading the magazine one day and he saw that there was an, an art, a notice that Rotary was looking for a new general secretary. <laughs> and so he kind of pulled, uh, pulled this uh, out, of the, out of the magazine, ripped it out, and then wrote across, you know, in half English, half Ukrainian, John, you should, you should really consider this. I think you have the skill set. And he mailed it to me. Uh -huh. And I looked at it and I saw that... Uh, that Corn Ferry was the, the firm that Rotary was using as a search firm, and we had worked very closely with Corn Ferry when I was in the government. So I called the head of the D.C. office and I said, Charlie, uh, you know, I just <laughs> heard about this, something I should be interested in. He said, absolutely, you know, and I hadn't thought about you. And so I threw my hat in the ring and the rest is, is history. So I learned actually two very valuable lessons from that, Wade. Uh, one is that very good things happen mm -hmm. when you read the Rotarian magazine. <laughs> good point. <laughs> and the second is always, always listen to your father. So, those are, <laughs> but those are you know, both excellent. <laughs> in fact, I keep that. Uh, if you look on my wall there, uh -huh. you can see the. Um, that's the actual. Oh wow, uh, Letter yeah. that my father mailed me. Very nice. And uh, wow. that led to the job. So it was a little bit of serendipity, and once I sort of started looking into the opportunity, it was just fantastic. Now, were you a Rotarian before that time? I had been a Rotarian in the early 90s in Ukraine. I was okay. living in Ukraine from 1991 to 1996. Okay. And so I was a, my father's club in, okay. in Michigan was one of the sponsoring clubs for the first Rotary Club in Ukraine after the uh, fall of the Soviet Union. Okay. And so I was living in Ukraine at the time, and he sort of got me involved in, in Rotary. So can you give us a hand with, uh, you know, helping establish this club? And so I turned out to be, I was a charter member. 
okay. uh, of that of that club in uh, in, in, in Kiev. Great, in okay, yeah. outstanding. And what drew you to the organization? Was it your father's influence, or something you saw in the organization itself? Well, I had seen my father had been a return for many years, and I'd seen you know the incredible work that, that Rotary Rotary was doing. The uh, the uh, you know the passion of the Rotarians. My experience in Kiev was very positive mm -hmm. as a as a Rotarian, and so I, what I really loved about it was that it was an organization that you could you could join to make a difference in your community, but also to make a difference globally with, with say for example polio eradication. Right. True. And 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 for me this whole polio effort is, is just it's just is really extraordinary. I mean it's a legacy that we're going to leave for mankind True. for as long as we live on this earth, mm -hmm. and that for me is a very to be able to play a tiny part That's true. Uh, in, in, in making that happen for me was a very, very compelling and very, very moving, very moving and motivating, motivating mm -hmm. factor. That. Now, now that you're general secretary, some of the experiences that you've had in the past, example, and the audience I'm sure would be curious about this, did you, were you involved very much with international um, projects, things like that with Rotary before that time? Well, have you done some in your lifetime? I wasn't involved before. Obviously now I'm involved yeah. in the sense that our, you know, the secretary, we oversee the, the giving of grants for, for many, many uh, Rotarian projects. But the, what got me interested in the international development space was the experience I had at the Millennium Challenge Corporation. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, this was a government agency right. designed to uh, provide U.S. Uh, foreign assistance in a very new way. I was the, the chief United States negotiator uh, for these assistance agreements that we were entering into with uh, our partner countries. And during my tenure, five and a half years there, I uh, moved about $6.3 billion uh, to uh, U.S. development assistance to uh, developing developing countries. And so I was, when I came out of the government, I didn't want to go pra back to practicing law, sort of been there, done that. I had really enjoyed the kind of this doing good and uh, through international development projects. So when my father sent me this <laughs> advertisement from the Rotarian Magazine, I said, wow, here I can combine my managerial skills at running a large organization uh, and, and at the same time continue active in this international development project space. And Rotary kind of brought both of those elements, okay. both those elements together. Good. Now, a lot of us that have been involved with Rotary for a long time, and I'm sure this happened to you, Experience what we call a rotary moment, something right. where you just get hooked with, the, sure. with what you're doing for it. Have, have you experienced that? My rotary moment came very early in my tenure. I went out to uh, to India to participate in a uh, NID, a National okay. Immunization Day. Mm -hmm. And for me, the moment came when my wife Marga and I were in a in a slum in Mumbai, mm -hmm. in a in a in a small room with just a table and desk and chairs, and and these mothers uh, were coming in with their children. Uh, to receive the polio vaccination, the oral vaccine. Right, right. And, and as I started vaccinating the first few children coming through, I looked out the door and I saw two kids with polio hmm. kind of dragging themselves along, along the street. And, and it really hit me at that point that here I am with these two small drops. I'm preventing that child from ever having to experience what these other children had been vaccinated do. And it really, at that point, it became really emotional for me. It wasn't just a cause or some um, academic exercise or we're going to eradicate a disease. It became very real. Yeah. And I think once it becomes real and very emotional, that's when you realize truly what a great impact you're having through, your, through your work. And so that was really my, my rotary moment. And I realized, my God, this is happening all over the place. And Rotarians, hundreds and thousands of Rotarians spent their time and energy not only raising money and advocating, but coming out to the field and vaccinating these children. That's when I really appreciated the extraordinary work the Rotary does. Wow, wow. That, that is a good one. <laughs> That's a good reason. Actually, there's quite a few people in Rotary that actually experienced a lot of that on an NID, National Immunization Day. So tell me uh, a little bit about family, your family. Um, your family, man. Yeah. And I have a, well, my, my wife, Margarita, she, uh, is uh, called Marga, mm -hmm. she's from Argentina. Uh, she's a very active Rotarian. She's a member of Chicago One, okay. uh, and is actually the president nominee oh, wow. uh, of Chicago One. Well, so we're really, really excited <laughs> about that. Uh, she's very active, loves, uh, loves Rotary, does, has got, you know, at any given time, two, three, four global grants uh, up in the air, and of course she, uh, she accompanies me on, on, on many of the trips and is really a great ambassador for for Rotary, very passionate about, about Rotary. And then I have a daughter, mm -hmm. a 26-year-old daughter who's currently living in Ukraine. Okay. Uh, she's in the fashion industry and, uh, and works for an outfit that represents uh, Ukrainian fashion designers. Uh, and she's going to be, in September, uh, going to Paris to do a master's in 
<laughs> in fashion management. Good for her, and so, good for you. <laughs> Congratulations to you. So, and we live here, of course, in Evanston, which is where Rotary headquarters are. Yeah, very very much enjoy living here. <laughs> good. Um, I want to touch on this real quickly before we run out of a lot of time on that. That is the uh, the polio ride and polio ride. You're an avid bicycle rider. I am. Um, still still doing a lot of that. Are you planning on doing the two, Tour de Tucson? I am, and it's uh, it's it's interesting how that that story came about. I am a very avid cyclist, and I was at our Bangkok convention in 2012, and I was on a water taxi and ran into a group of returns from Tucson. Okay. And we started talking and I and they said, Oh, you're an avid cyclist. And I said, I am. And they said, Well you should consider coming out to Tucson and helping us raise money for polio through our annual ride that we do. And there is something there's a ride called the El Tour de Tucson. It's one of the largest permit rides in the country. Somewhere between six and eight thousand cyclists participate in this ride. And the Rotarians in Tucson had started using this as a as a uh, a vehicle for raising money for polio. And they were raising five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars. And they said, "Can you give us a hand and come out ride and help us raise money?" So I came back to Evanston and I sort of activated our fundraising apparatus here, <laughs> and we started promoting this, you know, ride then polio. First year I think we raised like two fifty. Mm -hmm. The next year exponentially more and more and more. And then with the two to one Gates match, uh, the numbers started getting pretty large. <laughs> and I think through this ride with the Gates match over the last uh, eight years, we've raised about fifty million dollars wow. for. For polio, so wow. something I do every year. It's the weekend before uh, Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. and we usually have about 100 and 110 Rotarians from around the world to come and ride with us. Right. Uh, but the, we, through this effort, have raised uh, a lot of money for polio. <laughs> so, if there's any Rotarians out there, <laughs> there you avid go. cyclists, that plug. <laughs> please join us in Tucson <laughs> the weekend before uh, Saturday good. before Thanksgiving. It is a great event. I had yeah. the opportunity to actually cover that for one of the shows, and okay. of course, it, it was a great one. They exactly. did a good job of that one. Can't beat the weather in Tucson. You can't beat the weather. Yeah. No, no. And the, and the people in the place, they are very uh, yeah. inclusive. Yeah. yeah. And the Rotarians in Arizona are great. And they, they do a great job with the events. So, they, yeah. they really do. So um, tell me a little bit about this job that you have as general secretary. Do you travel a lot? Uh, does it require a lot of international correspondence, work, travel, or? Well, you know, our organization is quintessentially international. Seventy percent of our Rotarians are now outside of uh, North America. Okay. And in fact, most of our membership growth is, is happening outside of outside of North America. Uh, officially, Rotary works, I think, in eight or nine languages. We have. Uh, regional, our re Rotarian magazine plus our regional magazine, but I think uh, they cover about 32, 32 languages. I personally speak five languages, wow. so the internationality is obviously no secret here. The essence right. of the essence of Rotary. Uh, I do travel, not you know all the time, but I'd say you know certainly way less than let's say the president <laughs> right. would be traveling. But sure, I do travel uh, okay. quite a bit, and I think it's. Uh, and, and, and you know, really, the more I get out there, and the more I've been able to see what what Rotary is an organization, what Rotarians do, the more I'm simply simply in awe of our organization. I mean, it's absolutely extraordinary the breadth and scope of what uh, of what true. Rotary does. But it is, yeah, it's, it's an international job. I represent a, a, an international membership, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's what makes the job so interesting and exciting. Well, that's good. Well, I'm glad you do that. Most people kind of see it as you know a, an opportunity to travel. However, you become the eyes of Rotary and see what's needed out there, the support, you become a support staff, you know where and how to then integrate plans right. in the future of how to make the support uh, affordable and how it works well. So I think that's key to your job and your well, and, I th and I think there's two, two aspects to, to the extent I do travel. It's, it's one, is to, one is to better understand what's going on in the Rotary world. So we as a secretary can more effectively uh, support, as you said, support the Rotarians. And then when I go to these various events, whether it's the convention or the inst an institute or a district conference, uh, it's for me a huge learning experience to see what are some of the, and, and Rotarians are very, are not shy at all no, about expressing their true. opinion. And so, <laughs> and, 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 and I, you know, I hear, I, I, and, I, and I welcome that. And, and yeah. so that's a very important piece of it. And the other is really to, uh, to, to communicate to the Rotarians what we're doing at the secretary, what we're doing to support Rotarians around the world, what are the major initiatives that we're involved in, how are their dues being, right. being spent. So it's a dual listening, teaching role that uh, I think uh, I'm able to provide when I'm out of the building. And I think to a lot of the um, Rotarians, uh, especially here in the United States, what they see as a club, they don't, and then maybe a little bit of district and maybe slightly beyond that through the form of maybe an international right, convention right. or something, they don't understand or, or see the enormity that our organization actually has, as in your, your situation. Um, so knowing that, how do you 
try and relate that information down to the club level, to the membership yeah. level. Is there something you do? Well, first of all, maybe just to clarify for you, for our listeners that may not be aware of what uh, what the secretary is. Mm -hmm. You know, our Rotary World headquarters are, are here in Evanston. Uh, in fact, the building that we're interviewing in, uh, Rotary <laughs> owns it. It's an 18-story 18 18-story 18 building. Right. We use half for our own purposes, and the other half we lease out. So it's one of the premier office buildings on the North Shore. We have about 500. And 70 staff here in Evanston and another 200 in our seven international offices around the world. So the secretary really is the support network for the Rotarians and our professional staff is here to work with, with Rotarians. And part of our job is to communicate down right. and help communicate, provide the tools to Rotarians up and down, up and down the chain. And so we've obviously got our uh, a very extensive communications department, right. uh, the website, the various publications, various training manuals, uh, the very support that we provide to uh, to Rotarians, both on the Rotary International side and on the Rotary Foundation right. side. Processing grant requests, uh, okay. chartering clubs, collecting dues, all that sort of stuff uh, yeah. we do here at the at the Secretariat. We take board policy and then translate it True. into concrete action. True. And how many uh, employees do we have actually with Rotary International? Well, as I said, we have about 575 500. located here in, in okay. Evanston, and then we have another 200 in our seven Rotary offices outside the United States. We have an office in Australia, we have one in Japan, we have one in Korea, Brazil, uh, Zurich, uh, and uh, I think in India. Okay. We have, and then also we have a back office uh, in Pune, India uh, operations. So we okay. have seven offices around the world. Wow, wow. That'll keep you busy just doing that part of Absolutely. it. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So um, tell me, what are the challenges you see in, in your job specific, uh, the challenges uh, moving forward with an organization, how you improve it, the visions that you see, and how you're going to accomplish those yeah. goals that you made for yourself. As well, a you know, secretary. this is, you know, Wade, this is an incredible time to be a Rotarian because we're really at the cusp of eradicating polio, right. which, as I talked about earlier, is going to, you know, leave a legacy for mankind as long as we live. We're in the, this year. We're fully launching our new strategic plan, right. and so, and that plan is going to really take our organization into the next 10, 20, 30, uh, 30 years very, very uh, exciting time. We're, we're launching uh, new initiatives in terms of the foundation, our types of grant models we're offering to the, uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the Rotarians. We're doing an awful lot of work in terms of improving the uh, IT uh, resources that we provide the Rotarians, improving our website, improving and providing tools for Rotarians, making it easier for them to give the foundation, uh, easier to carry out the business, uh, uh, the business of Rotary. And so it's a very exciting time. I'm very proud uh, to be part of that process, and that's really our job, Wade, is to, is to work with the board and the volunteer leadership right. in Rotary, and, and to and to really move our uh, to really move our organization forward. We do have some challenges, uh, particularly in North America. Membership is a challenge. We're, we're losing members in North America. We're doing extremely well in Asia, as an example. And so I think a big focus going forward, uh, starting this year and, and moving forward, will be how do we begin to grow Rotary. Uh, in North America, but all throughout the world, using new and innovative club models. Hmm. So that's going to be a huge focus going forward. How can we grow Rotary using new, innovative club models that are perhaps more attractive to a demographic that's not as attractive as we'd like it to be to our current models? Oh, that that would be a, <laughs> a good way to yeah. go go forward with it. So when you talk about the membership, are we talking about specific differences in club structure and in membership? You said. Uh, I believe we have a global initiative for global membership. Well, one, 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 of, one, of the, one of the aspects of, of, the, of, the, um, of, the, of the strategic plan is to begin thinking about developing channels into Rotary that don't necessarily involve joining a Rotary Club. Okay. So we're going to be piloting an idea that oh, uh, you become not a member of a Rotary Club, but a member of Rotary International. Okay. You become a global participant or a global member. Uh, and then the question, of course, is what's going to be the value proposition? Why would somebody want to become a global participant in Rotary versus joining a, a Rotary Club? That's just one example yeah. uh, of, of some of the new and innovative things we're going to be doing uh, to try to move our organization uh, even uh, even further uh, into the future. And how would you say the Rotary International partners in with the Rotary Foundation in achieving that? Has that become something that would work hand in hand or is there going to be a uh, continue to be a difference in one or the other? No, the way I look at it is it's, it's one rotary. We have yeah. the Rotary Foundation and we have Rotary, but they're, you know, one, you know, we, they, they have to work hand, hand in glove. Right. You know, it's the membership that provides the vast 
majority of the, of the, of the, of the contributions to the Rotary right. Foundation. Right. It's the Rotary Foundation grants and programs that allow, in many cases, Rotarians to do these projects Correct. Yeah. That, we were, that, we were, that we were talking about. And, so, and, and the good thing is that you have the Foundation and, and Rotary International and the Secretariat, all three groups, working as one united team. That's a very important concept that's happening, yeah. and that's what we really need to continue to do in order to really move Rotary, writ large, forward. Okay. Oh, that's, that's, that's very good. Now, do you see the projects that we do through the Foundation as kind of um, a membership tool also for bringing people in, new people? Have you looked at that as a possibility? Because that serves the, I would say, the need for service sure. in people and individuals. Well, absolutely. In fact, when we rolled out the new grant model, global grant model, several years ago, we had a number of different things we were trying to, hoping to achieve with them. One was to encourage clubs and districts to band together and do projects that are larger, more scalable, more measurable, more impactful. In other words, get more bang for the rotary buck. But a secondary benefit is if you start doing these larger, more visible projects, it helps on your public relations. And the better your public relations, the more you can attract members. The more members we bring in, the more potential donors we have for the foundation. So you create that circle, this positive, <laughs> continuous circle. And so it's all interrelated. Okay. It's all, it's all in, interrelated. So yes, uh, to the extent that we can successfully implement that model and do great projects, obviously it's got to help on membership and PR because people are going to be attracted to, oh wow, Ruby does phenomenal things. Yes, I want to be part of that. Right, right. And that's what we hope to, hope to partially, in addition to the good work that the projects themselves do, uh, to use that as, as an attraction for, for new membership. Great, great. Now we recently just had the Council on Legislation, right. and um, tell me a little bit about those uh, enactments that passed forward and how you see those things fitting into, I would say, the strategic plan and those yeah. initiatives that we have moving forward. Well, the last two councils, we had one in 16 and Correct. just recently in April of 19, I think were two phenomenal councils. The 16 council passed uh, a number of enactments that allow clubs to have considerably more flexibility, considerable more flexibility in terms of how they organize meetings, membership, uh, membership categories, etc. So it's kind of opened the door for fashioning, again, these new innovative right. club models uh, and giving clubs a lot of flexibility. Now, if you want to continue with the traditional model and it's working well, carry on. But now you have the opportunity to really think out of the box and right. be creative. You know, there is no rotary police weight. <laughs> For me, what's important That's is true. does it work? <laughs> does it work? Yeah. Uh, and on one hand, and this last council, I thought, what, which was really exciting, is that it, it has to do with Rotaract. Mm -hmm. You know, only worldwide about 5% of our Rotaractors become Rotarians, mm -hmm. meaning 95% do not. And these are young men and women who are passionate about yeah. Rotary, yeah. Uh, ideals of Rotary are active, and yet we lose the vast majority of them. So how do we facilitate that glide path to make Rotary, have Rotary and Rotaract more, work more closely together? And so the council took a very important first step by making Rotaract clubs now members of Rotary International. Because Rotary International is an association of Rotary clubs. And now Rotary International is an association of Rotaract clubs and Rotary clubs. Mm -hmm. So this means that Rotaract is no longer a program of Rotary. It's an integral part of Rotary. Now, Rotaractors do not, have not become Rotarians as a result of that action. Right, right. But what it has done is, dem is sent a message to Rotaractors that you are now an integral part of Rotary International as our Rotary, Rotary clubs. And that's just the first of many steps we need to do to bridge that gap between Rotary and Rotaract and facilitate the transition of Rotaractors to Rotarians over time. And I think it starts by doing jointly doing projects. Agreed. Yeah. No do that. projects together that breaks down those generational gaps and, and exactly. facilitates that, that glide exactly. path yeah. from Rotaract to Rotary. I do see that. Um, and, and great points on that one. The implementation of the plan that we had that just passed at the Council on Legislation, do you see that as being a challenge? Is it six months, one year? Uh, uh, which point are you talking the, about? conversion of Rotaract into uh, integrating into Rotary itself because we're looking at the possibility of what the due structure would be, what the membership mm -hmm. would include in that right. one because it'll be a slightly different model. Yeah, that has not yet been resolved. I mean, okay. the first step was really to recognize Rotaract as part right. of Rotary International. Step one of yeah. many steps. Sure. And so to your, to it's not a six-month process, it's also not a 60-year process. Yeah. I, I see this being a, you know, 
four, five, six, seven year process. Okay. We continue to build on that, continue to you know address the issue of dues, address the issue of right. a whole slew of things, participation of rotor actors right. and global grants. I mean, there's a whole slew of issues that we need to now begin addressing and attacking uh, to better integrate Rotor Act uh, into into Rotary. Okay, good, good. Now, as we another yeah, one. but at the rate, it all begins and ends at the club level. So it, the it way, does. We, the way we can true. immediately start is by not only having rotor, rotary clubs forming rotor, rotor, rotor rack clubs, but having rotor, rotarians begin working more aggressively with their rotor actors true. on global grants, on projects, on a whole slew, on mentoring. Now, that doesn't. There's no need for any further enactments or, or anything coming from RI for that. Uh, it really, the clubs are fully empowered now to more actively and aggressively engage with their road rack clubs. Great, great. One last question here. Uh, hopefully it's not going to be a hard one for yeah. you. What have you enjoyed most out of being the General Secretary yeah. of Rotary? Well, I mean, I have a phenomenal staff that I work, colleagues that I work with. I mean, it's been just, just you really have a world-class uh, secretary and staff here, and I've really enjoyed working with my colleagues. I've enjoyed tremendously the interaction I've had with Rotarians. Um, it's, it's, I think the thing I've most enjoyed is really uh, seeing the enormous scope and depth and impact that Rotary makes. Sure. I mean, to know that I'm yeah. a small part, a tiny part of this extraordinary uh, organization uh, is, you know, it's incredible. Think about it, wait, the youth exchange programs yeah. that we run, yeah. RILA, all the Rotaract, Interact, yeah. all the projects that we do, global grants yeah. that we do, all the local projects that uh, the Rotary Clubs do, the mentoring, the, the, you know, the bringing people together, uh, creating uh, goodwill. It's not just a slogan in Rotary, right. we actually make it, it, make it happen. Uh, that's been the most enjoyable piece, to see, to see the impact that this organization is having on people's lives and on the world. That's yeah. been great. I see that as being one great motivator and why you're yeah. such a good worker, hard working at <laughs> what you do. Yeah. Well, John, thank you very much yeah. for your time. I appreciate Wait, that yeah. very much. Thanks, and for, thanks again, for having me. Appreciate it. For all the outstanding work that you're doing thank for you. Rotary, we definitely appreciate that. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. So you'll see, uh, as you've seen, John Huco is one outstanding person. What he's done for Rotary, what he's continued to do for Rotary is something I would say is extremely impressive. He's on the 18th floor. He sits right across the hallway from the president and president-elect. And because of that, he's in constant contact knowing exactly what's going on worldwide. His job does not have him traveling a heck of a lot. He spends most of his time at headquarters where the presidents themselves do almost ex exclusively traveling. So because of that, he does have time to take a look at that. As you heard, the office itself is uh, headquarters for Rotary International in Evanston. Most of the staff that we have working there actually are answering to him. And because of that, he knows exactly what's going on. If you ever had a chance, go ahead and head to Evanston, meet him, tell John that Wade sent you because he is a very nice man. You'll enjoy time spent with him. With that, thank you very much for joining us. We will see you next time.